Secret agents. We love them. And what's not to love? They go to exotic locations, seduce beautiful women, use insanely cool gadgets, drive awesome cars, and just kick ass. I don't know about you, but I always wanted to be one when I was growing up, even though the thought of doing a push-up at the time was as hard as skydiving. When I grew up, the closest I ever got was asking for a vodka martini, shaken not stirred, at a bar once, which I immediately spit out on the floor. So yeah, I was never gonna be James Bond. But then, I found a show that made me believe that in another world, a schlubby loser like me could be a super spy. And that show, of course, was Chuck. Yes, Chuck. The show named after that Best Buy, or I mean Buy More employee, who works for the Geek Squad. Damn it, I mean the Nerd Herd. A regular guy who accidentally gets a spy database downloaded into his brain and inadvertently turns into a super spy. Sure, he wasn't the best secret agent in the world, but his adventures made many people live out that fantasy. Not only did he get to do all the awesome spy stuff, but he also fell in love with a beautiful CIA agent who wound up seeing how wonderful he was. This show was special, not just for the writing and performances, but also for the relationship it had with its fans. A relationship so amazing that people still talk about it to this day. So now that I have created an altar to the man simply known as Chuck, let us put on our sunglasses and get ready to download this episode of Gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> Chuck was created by Josh Schwartz and Chris Fedick. Schwartz is responsible for one of my favorite shows of the 2000s, The O.C., about a boy from a poor neighborhood who is taken in by a rich family in California. But I don't want to get into that show too much because then this video will be over two hours long. We might do a video on that show another time. The other co-creator of Chuck was Chris Fedick, a writer and producer who's gone on to make many of my favorite canceled shows. Fedick is a very talented guy, and I do hope that one of his future projects ends up sticking. In an interview with the Hulu blog The Green Room, Fedick said, quote, The show is a mashup. It's a combination of one part The Office, one part 24, and one part Alias. When you mash those shows together, what happens? What we were excited about is if you built the show like something like The Office, where you essentially met all these characters and you love them, and then how terrifying it would be if Sidney Bristow or Jack Bauer came into The Office, because you knew when those people showed up that someone was going to get shot, and someone was going to get tortured, and someone was going to get killed. That's where the initial germ of the Chuck show came from. As Schwartz and Fedek developed the show, it turned into a series about Chuck Bartowski, a computer technician who works at the local Buy More. Chuck is still recovering from being kicked out of Stanford and having his girlfriend leave him for his college roommate, Bryce Larkin. It turns out that Bryce is now a CIA agent who steals a top secret project called The Intercept a computer program that merges the CIA and NSA databases and inserts them into a person's brain. Bryce steals the Intersect, and before he is seemingly killed, emails it over to Chuck. The Intersect downloads itself into Chuck's brain, and now he has the entire government database in his noggin, giving him the power to see government intel and piece information together so he can predict terrorist acts, identify foreign spies, find crime cartels, etc. Throughout the series, Chuck is partnered up with John Casey, a no-nonsense NSA agent with a permanent scowl, and the beautiful badass CIA agent, Sarah Walker. Other characters on the show included Chuck's overprotective sister, Ellie, her boyfriend and future husband, Devin Captain Awesome Woodcomb, and his best friend, the pathetic yet lovable Morgan Grimes. The casting of Chuck was excellent. At the time, casting Chuck would have had to be done very carefully. One bad choice would have tanked this show before the pilot even started. Australian actress Yvonne Strahovski was cast as Chuck's love interest, the badass CIA agent Sarah Walker. Strahovski had been acting in Australia for a few years when she flew to LA to become a more mainstream actress. Before she left Australia, Yvonne sent in her audition tape for Chuck. Strahovski had begun to audition for other roles like the failed Bionic Woman reboot, when she was quickly called in for a screen test with Zachary Levi. And six months later, she had moved to LA and begun filming the show. Sarah Walker started as a simple love interest for Chuck. She was a badass spy who was set up to fall in love with a big-hearted nerd with a super-powered brain. 
But what was impressive was the way it was written. Most shows are pretty heavy-handed with this type of scenario. But on Chuck, it felt very organic. Sarah had a cover of being Chuck's fake girlfriend. And at first, Sarah seemed to see Chuck as someone she would want to protect. But towards the end of the first season, it was clear she had also fallen for him. The chemistry between Zachary Levi and Yvonne Strahovski was amazing. You could tell that they were real-life friends, and it was easy to believe that they would fall in love. As the series would continue, Sarah was fleshed out to be a former con artist and government assassin. She was very careful about who she opened up to, so the love triangle she had between Chuck and her former partner Bryce Larkin was fascinating. Bryce was the first person she ever opened up to, as he was Chuck's former roommate and friend. And this is the reason why Chuck's safety was so important to her. Bryce was played by the multi-talented Matthew Bomer. You may know Bomer from his roles in White Collar and Do Patrol. He is an incredible actor who can sing, act, and kick ass. And I have no resistance to say that he looks like an angel. I swear to God that if you told me Matthew Bomer was a celestial being, I would totally believe you. Adam Baldwin was cast as NSA agent John Casey. Baldwin previously made a splash with the public on another fan favorite show called Firefly, yet another victim of Fox's executives of original programming. I could go into another rant on Fox's past decisions on their shows, but we've done that plenty of times before. I could not find a concrete reason as to why Baldwin was cast as Casey. Many fans cite Baldwin's work on Firefly and Angel as the reason to how he got the role, but others say it was his role in Independence Day that did it because that character is a lot like John Casey. All I know for sure was that this character was made specifically for Adam Baldwin. Casey was a no-nonsense Jack Bauer type of soldier who had no qualms about killing to accomplish his mission. In the pilot, he kills Bryce with no hesitation to stop him from stealing the intersect. As the series progresses, Casey begins to slowly warm up to the rest of the team, and surprisingly even cared for Chuck's lovable loser best friend, Morgan. One of my favorite Casey scenes was when he uses his former teammates from his time in the Marines to organize the wedding for Chuck's sister at the last minute. It was a badass scene, and still gives me goosebumps whenever he rappels down from a helicopter to save the day. It's later revealed that Casey faked his death under orders leaving his wife, who he had not known was pregnant with his child. His daughter Alex grows up and years later ends up falling in love with Morgan. I did not like this storyline. I just could not see Adam Baldwin as the father of a 20-year-old. He just doesn't look that old. Yes, I know he could have had her when he was 18 or 20 years old, but I just don't buy it. Chuck's best friend was the lovable loser, Morgan Grimes, who had been Chuck's best friend ever since they were six years old. He supports Chuck 110%, maybe to Chuck's detriment, but he's a loyal friend who's there to give words of encouragement and is willing to take a bullet for Chuck. Morgan was played by Joshua Gomez, who brought this sincere devotion and geek love into portraying Morgan. Levi and Gomez had great comedic timing. They would drop geek knowledge that would tickle the average viewer of the show. It's impossible to think of anyone else playing Morgan other than Joshua Gomez. His chemistry with Levi just enhanced every scene that they were in. It's nice to know that Gomez and Levi remain close friends to this very day. Rounding out the cast was Chuck's overprotective sister Ellie, played by Sarah Lancaster and her boyfriend slash future husband and father of her child, Devin Woodcomb, aka Captain Awesome, played by Ryan McPartland. Both of these characters were flushed out throughout the series. Ellie's relationship with her estranged father and mother just pulled on your heartstrings, as she had to grow up fast by practically raising Chuck by herself. Devin was a character that took an interesting turn throughout the seasons. At first, he was written as a typical bro-like character, but he was multi-layered. He never came off as arrogant, he loved Ellie, and truly cared about Chuck and Morgan. He never looked down on them, but sincerely liked them, and considered them his friends and family. This is so funny since originally Devin was only supposed to be in a few episodes, before being revealed to be an enemy spy. However, he became so popular with the fans that this was dropped and McPartland was made a series regular. Finally, Chuck could not have worked without its titular star, Chuck Bartowski. The casting for Chuck took a while. I mean, who could you cast as the perfect combination of leading man and goofball? 
they met with a big number of actors trying to find the perfect choice. And at one point, Chris Pratt was even considered. <gasps> but when Zachary Levi sat down and talked, they knew that they had their Chuck. Calm down. Okay. Um, so, uh, so that's how I met Morgan. I saved his life in the fourth grade, and my sister's been regretting it ever since. <laughs> They're from other agencies, the Pentagon and the NSA, and they are after you. What? Why? What? Me? Why? Why me? Let me, time out. There's nothing, I, there's nothing about me. There's nothing. Levi says in an interview that he was almost in the Broadway musical production of Young Frankenstein, but had to give up the opportunity because the pilot for this show got picked up as a series. Levi has always said that playing Chuck wasn't hard for him, since he says Chuck is just him playing a super spy. At the beginning of the show, Chuck was a very smart, and sad guy. He had never recovered from his friend getting him expelled from school and sleeping with his girlfriend. But then he gets the Intersect downloaded into his brain and finds a new purpose in his life. But even without the Intersect, Chuck was a hero to people. He would go out of his way to help anyone in need. One of the perfect examples was when a father and his daughter went to the Buy More store to fix their video camera. It turned out the father screwed up and didn't record his daughter's recital. So Chuck comes up with a brilliant idea to recreate the little girl's performance for the entire store. It's very cute and just shows how much of a big heart Chuck has. The show's first season had Chuck's adventures using his creativity to get out of dangerous situations. It began to build the foundation between the characters' relationships, specifically that between Chuck and Sarah. In the second season, not only did Sarah and Casey's backstories get expanded upon, but the Buy More employees started to have more scenes. Two of the biggest fan favorite employees were Lester Patel, played by Vic Sahai, and Jeffrey Barnes, played by Scott Krinsky. Lester and Jeff were two of the funniest characters on this show. They were always coming up with stupid schemes that would blow up in their faces. However, they did form one of the most iconic TV musical duos of all time. Jeff and Lester's musical performances were always a highlight of this series. The idea for Jeffster came from a casual comment made by Sahai to the writers, when he said that Lester had a rock star look by pointing out his hair and swagger. And Jeffster has proven to be a huge hit outside of the show. They have even performed for fans at the 2009 San Diego Comic Con. Now originally there was going to be yet another character on the show. In the pilot script, there was supposed to be a second love interest who would have been featured. At least that was what was planned for the first season. A character called Kayla Hart, who was in the pilot episode and would have served as Chuck's second love interest. Actress Natalie Martinez was cast and even appeared in some promotional material for the series. But they cut the character because they said she would have complicated the show. Plus, the show's creators said that it wouldn't have been believable for Chuck to have had two love interests. <laughs> From the start, Chuck struck a chord with geeks everywhere, and it's easy to see why, as it was always unashamed to declare its geek love. But be careful, because remember last time you were in charge, you led our party of D&D adventurers to their fiery deaths. <laughs> <clears throat> We've been over this, Morgan, okay? If Tom had cast the spell of confusion, then we would have been out of that situation. That's neither here nor there. You were distracting me so she could break in. Yeah. Clever girl. You have to understand, at the time of this show, we were still in the process of saying that geeks were cool. Things were beginning to change with the public, and Chuck just embraced that. This endeared the show to pop culture fans and created a devoted fan base. Critics and fans fell in love with its first season, but it was its second season where things began to get rocky with the network. The ratings began to suffer, as it went up against programming like Dancing with the Stars, House, and How I Met Your Mother. If that wasn't bad enough, the writer's strike had begun, and presidential news conferences would preempt the show. It was the perfect storm for cancellation. And when word got out, the army of fans went on the offensive. Led by Gary Jones, Mel Laurel, and Liz Henderson, the trio hosted the first and biggest Chuck podcast at the time, Chuck vs. The Podcast. They organized a letter writing campaign and a well-coordinated social media protest, but it was the last aspect of these methods of saving the show that was the most impressive. Liz and Mel ran the biggest Chuck fan website and forum, which became the hub of the fans' campaign. 
It was here that a fan named Wendy Farrington came up with an idea. Subway had done some product placement on the show, and when Farrington saw this, she told fellow fans to buy a $5 sub from Subway to show them that Chuck could bring in revenue. And Subway saw an increase in revenue, especially when a clip of Zachary Levi making Subway sandwiches at a London convention went viral. Another fan initiative was called Have a Heart, Renew Chuck, in which fans donated a total of $17,000 for the American Heart Association. The press quickly took the story and ran with it. The Hollywood Reporter, NPR, and even Time Magazine would cover the story. It was one of those rare instances when both critics and fans joined together to save a TV show. It became so huge that even Nestle sent more than a thousand packs of its Wonka Nerds candy to NBC after Josh Schwartz made such a suggestion to fans in an interview with the New York Times. So Chuck got renewed and the show finally ended with its fifth season. Looking back on it, Chuck wasn't only a great show, but also the perfect example of the symbiotic relationship between a television show and its fans. Many TV shows that I watch today don't have intimacy anymore. Maybe that's why some of my favorite shows have such a short shelf life. For better or worse, that intimacy isn't there. The Chuck fan community is something to be admired and envied. Not only did they share their love of Chuck, but also got the people behind the show to give the love back to them. I wish I had the kind of passion and creativity that the fans of Chuck clearly had. Now, should Chuck come back? Well, there's a good chance it will. Zachary Levi has been campaigning for years to make a Chuck movie, and with his recent popularity playing my favorite superhero, Shazam, it just may happen. On an episode of Michael Rosenbaum's podcast, Inside You, Levi has said that he is close to making his dream a reality. I've been literally trying to do this since 2012, wow. or whatever. And, uh... Dude, I feel like the time is is nigh. nigh. It's nigh. Yeah, I I've had some very good, promising conversations with uh, producers. Well, with with uh, the creators, uh, Josh Schwartz and Chris Fedak, and we had a really lovely get together and catch up. Good. And so hopefully, I don't know. We'll see. I for all the Chuck fans who are listening to this right now, this is not. Well, maybe I'll. I don't know. I don't know if this is a, an, just, an official announcement. Yeah. I don't know if this is an official announcement or not, but I will tell you that for all of you who have been patient, thank you for your patience. I have not stopped trying and I will not stop trying. I've joked that I will, you know, even if I'm a six a geriatric Chuck, we're going to do it one day. But even if the Chuck movie doesn't happen, Chuck the series had a great run. It wasn't like other canceled shows. It didn't end with a cliffhanger like I sadly have had to cover in the past. It didn't have multiple storylines crammed into three episodes, as I've seen so many times before. And it had a good ending that left the characters with a sense of closure, but with an open possibility of having further adventures. Currently, the entire series is streaming on Prime Video. I highly suggest that you check it out for yourself before it's gone. So put on your best nerdy shirt, get a bowl of popcorn from your Star Wars bowl, and sit down to watch the most lovable and nerdiest super spy to ever grace our television screens. You don't need to flash any government secrets to know that Chuck is still worth the watch. I'm Jesse Shade speaking on behalf of David Arroyo for JoeBlow.com, and thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company that appreciates all of your support, and we will see you next time for the next installment of Gone But Not Forgotten.